Hi. Uh, like Franz said, I just uh, defended my thesis uh, a few weeks ago. Um, so I, uh, um, it will be a lot of focus on, on the thesis work, actually. And uh, um, I'm also, uh, like Per Magnus, I'm going to be an expatriate going to Japan to continue studying soundscape in Japanese gardens after this. So. So it's a um, it's a very interesting field to to be in, like uh, Franz mentioned earlier. Here, it's uh, there's a lot of things happening, and uh, I think we have um, already seen one example today. That it's really interesting um, example, and also I'm looking forward very much to the rest of the day. And uh, I will give uh, my perspective. It's uh, like Franz said, it's a quite broad uh, approach to. Um, to the sound environment and the concept of soundscape. I have been um, um, taking a broad approach on landscape architecture. As I'm coming from um, landscape, architect uh, landscape architecture myself, um, I have a training as, as a landscape architect and also a brief period of uh, working with uh, landscape architecture uh, in practice. Uh, some of my previous works are displayed here. This is just to give a kind of background to uh, my uh, going into writing a thesis on, on soundscapes in, in landscape architecture. Um, I also have a, what, you, what I would describe as a qualitative background in sound. Um, I've been working a lot, I'm coming from, from music, um, so I have a kind of uh, experiential focus going into the sound, to a kind of feel where a lot of the things that have been uh, discussed about sound is, is related to, um, to noise. And uh, as I will come back to that, I have tried to combine these two perspectives in the thesis work. Um, and also, um, my master project was also about sound, so I am very much into sound and soundscape. It's, uh, I think it's, um, it's a very interesting field. Uh, so here is uh, a picture of my uh, thesis, and um, I will follow the disposition here uh, in this presentation to, to give you an idea about, uh, about um, uh, my approach. And also, if you're interested, I brought a few copies that you can, that I can also, if you're interested, distribute. Um, and I will start with some starting points into going into this. I already mentioned how I'm interested in, in sounds from coming from music and um, and also landscape. And and the thesis work is essentially a, a combination of these two of my major interests. But I am. Um, I, I quite uh, soon after working in landscape architecture, I, I realized that the, there was a kind of um, there was a lot of things that could be could be done in terms of uh, thinking more about sound within the discipline. There is a notion uh, of um, what is have been called um, the third point there, uh, a critique against landscape architecture and related discipline as not taking account for sound, and this is sometimes referred as ocular centrism or um, a visual focus, which is related to the tools that are used within the profession. And I, I have read about this and I also um, see it uh, in, in studying landscape, architect and landscape architecture and practicing landscape architecture. And at the same time, decisions in landscape architecture have a lot of influence on the sound environment in terms of acoustics, um, the choice of materials and uh, where you position different locations in the environment and, and so on. So there's a lot of um, things that landscape architects can do in terms of influencing the sound environment. And this is a field that has been... Um, there is um, a lot of knowledge in, in the, the historical times of landscape architecture, but it, there is a sense that it has been forgotten during modernism. And um, this is problematic given the fact that sound influences health, behavior, and experience. And 
like Franz mentioned earlier, um, I'm going through a lot of these uh, these sources to to motivate the working more with sound in landscape architecture and also formulating strategies by which it is pos possible to to uh, for landscape architects to work more with sound environment. And I will come back to to this uh, strategy. Um, or I would say, once again, mention uh, how the thesis is essentially a combination of two different fields. Uh, we have, uh, on the one hand, oh, sorry. Oh. Okay, we have on the one hand, environmental noise management, which is working a lot of uh, with the quantitative uh, aspects of the sound environment, trying to protect people from, from noise. And uh, this has also been referred to as a defensive strategy. And this is a noise map from uh, Rehabilitation Garden in Alnarp, which is one of the papers I've been working on in the, in the thesis. Um, and on the other hand, I mentioned this also, um, how there is a kind of long tradition of working with sound and landscape architecture, focusing mostly on the experiential qualities of sound, like in this example, a Renaissance garden in Italy, uh, where there are um, literally filled with uh, different water installations and other experiential things about sound, like grottos. And, and so there is a long tradition. And in the thesis, I have tried to combine this in what I denoted as a soundscape approach to noise, basically um, taking an experiential perspective on, on the sound environment and working in noise exposed situations to see how it is possible to potentially take a, a combination of these two perspectives in reducing noise impact. So this is... Um, from one of the studies, a picture uh, conceptualizing the idea of a soundscape approach to noise. In this, I will return to this example project. But to give you an idea, it's a, it's a little bit about working with masking strategies and combine. Um, that is to, um, to, for instance, use the sound of water to re reduce the impact of noise and also combine this with other aspects, like in this case, noise screens. Um, so the aim of the thesis was to facilitate soundscape thinking in landscape architecture. And uh, it's based on four individual studies. Um, I've already mentioned a couple of these and I will give an overview uh, later also. It's, the thesis is practice orientated. As this uh, previous example I showed, it was a structure that was built on an urban square and subsequently evaluated in terms of experience of sound. Um, and also, that's uh, one example of how uh, landscape architects could work with sound, but it's also um, a study of how landscape architects currently work with sound, so kind of working in both understanding the present practice and also looking into different ways of um, elaborating or coming up with new strategies. And this is um, um, what I will return to as a soundscape approach to noise, basically, is the outcome of that. Um, like I mentioned, the soundscape concept, we also heard this from Per Magnus earlier, um, is uh, very much associated with uh, Murray Schaefer. But it also has a prehistory of, um, of Schaefer. But Schaefer has been really important in my work. And to, to understand the experiential quality of sounds in a context as experienced by people. So I also used um, the ISO definition from 2014 to position the work. And uh, generally speaking, I have been incorporating a mixed method approach, which has varied <coughs> depending on uh, the individual studies. And I will mention uh, some uh, brief uh, things, aspects about uh, these are the four studies. Um, 
essentially the first one is that's also from the rehabilitation garden where there was a noise map previously. There is a rehabilitation garden in Alnarp. And the second paper was a study of uh, architectural competition dealing with how landscape architects are currently working with the sound environment in terms of um, reducing impact from noise, for instance, in a very noise exposed situations. And this uh, number three is, is the um, project I, I showed also a picture from with uh, schematic color circles indicating how <coughs> how it's possible to work with with sound environment in in a noise exposed context this was a intervention that was built in in Malmö on a public square St Knut's toy and the fourth paper was taking it all um, even one more step further in working with workshops with practicing landscape architects to come up with new solutions for working with sound in the in the profession of landscape architecture so these are summary of the papers and i will um summarize some of the results here in the so, so in the discussion of results in the thesis, which uh, basically, uh, as you can see here, leads to a soundscape approach to noise, uh, the kind of um, essence of all of these, these studies. And um, the section also includes the discussion on current soundscape thinking in landscape architecture and a general discussion of the role of sound using the soundscape concept and also uh, discussing possibilities in a general manner. And so we come to the soundscape approach to noise, which is uh, in the kind of practice orientated approach, I come to the conclusion there are three different major aspects that landscape architects can use to, to work with sound in, in their designs. And um, this uh, localization of functions and reduction of unwanted sounds and introduction of wanted sounds. And uh, the first one of these is, is more kind of overall planning perspective in terms of where different, loca uh, different functions in, in the environment are located um, to optimize, for instance, not ma making sure that not noise um, is situated close to areas where there is a need for tranquil tranquility, like, uh, like a rehabilitation garden, for instance. And um, <clears throat> essentially, I also stress in the thesis that it's really important to consider not uh, only one of these, as was the case uh, a lot of the time in practice, uh, particularly reduction of unwanted sounds, which is essentially the defensive strategy, the env environmental noise management kind of focus on, on noise protection from sound, but also to, to uh, include um, the other two areas as well and, and particularly uh, I investigated number three in terms of working with masking and how this um, is possible. In some cases it's not working uh, and in some cases it's, it's uh, it can work quite good and it's depending on a lot of different aspects like uh, the sound pressure levels, the characteristics of the, the sounds and, and um, um, that leads me to the next, the deeper uh, or the elaborated version of this model for comprehensive action, which is called this in paper two. And in paper four, it was an elaborated version called Soundscape Actions, in which uh, 23 uh, central ways of uh, working with the sound environment are kind of discussed in, in relation to the pre present uh, research situation. For instance, like I mentioned, uh, auditory masking in number three here is, is quite a com complex way of working. It can be really useful, but it's depending on sound pressure levels and so on. So um, I will come back now. to the example project and uh, tie this back with the general approach.
and uh, discuss how this was also kind of working with all of these three aspects. Uh, so for instance, uh, this, the situation of, of this intervention was on an urban square that was very noise exposed, coming close to the Amiralsgatan for those of you who know uh, Malmö. And it, this was intentional to position this uh, intervention quite close to to the noise exposure to create a kind of contrasting environment within this this small seclu secluded space, which is uh, called an arbor, the um, shore, and um, to create this kind of it was a kind of contrast compensation variation, and this was uh, category one then to consider the kind of localization, the context of where a place is. Uh, is. And uh, the actual intervention was constructed from high noise screens, which is category two then, and this was designed as a kind of uh, landscape feature, not um, putting so much focus on noise, but rather kind of trying to make an aesthetic impression of this as well. Uh, and finally, also, um, Category three, which was the introduction of sound, was uh, the addition of uh, uh, sound of forest through speakers that were incorporated in the space. So there was a there was a sound of, of a small brook and uh, some rustling leaves within the space. So it was a combination of different uh, different approaches, uh, or you could call it a comprehensive approach to noise treatment. Uh, creating a, a tranquil space and and uh, doing this by working both with noise screens and uh, and masking strategies. And finally, some uh, concluding remarks and ways going forward. Uh, perhaps something we can also talk about here today, and uh, I'm looking forward also to discussing in the in the break and uh, so forth. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to to Tokyo uh, to study um, gardens. There is a long tradition of, of working with um, sensory aspects in, in, in Japan, I think. And um, I'm going to study Japanese gardens and the notion of uh, forest bathing, if you've heard about this. When they're taking, they say they take a, a bath in the forest when they take a walk in the forest to kind of uh, um, reduce stress, and this is also related to the multimodal aspect, I think, very much that Promagnus talked about. Um, but uh, just to conclude, um, the, the thesis uh, increases the understanding for sound in landscape architecture and introduces strategies and tools as a soundscape approach to noise. Um, a an increased collaboration between envir environmental noise management uh, and the design tradition is proposed, as this is considered of as working separately, and this is, was also found to be problematic in several cases. And uh, it could be more creative to work more closely together and combine these traditions. Um, another aspect that was um, found was that the notion of representation was problematic because all of the representations of sound that landscape architects work with are either noise maps or non-existing. So there is a lot of visual kind of tools in landscape architecture. And there is uh, one thing uh, that I discussed was the notion of oralization, where you can kind of simulate sounds in digitally. That could be an interesting thing in the future, also in relation to the notion of uh, soundscape actions. To, extended tool could be interesting to kind of see in real time how um, some of these aspects influence the sound environment that could kind of motivate um, landscape architecture. Um, and also I discussed some contemporary challenges and future prospects in terms of um, there is a, a discourse on densification and a lot of infrastructural changes, very much things uh, happening um, in relation to uh, city planning and uh, sustainability. And it's also very relatable to the notion of quiet areas, I think, as this example project also illustrates. Um, and finally, I want to uh, emphasize the notion of variation, which also materialized in all of the four studies that as, an, as a 
good approach, a basic approach to working with the sound environment that kind of... There was some people actually uh, really enjoyed the uh, noisy environment, which is uh, can kind of haphazardly referred to as noisy environment, but this can also be a very important quality in, in cities, like there is a kind of activation and um, interesting things associated with noise, but it is also important to have these kind of contrast quiet areas and I think the thesis introduces a set of tools by which to uh, to work with this and kind of create a purposeful and, and varied sound environment. And I think that's a good way to close this session. And okay, thank you very much, Gunnar Servien. <laughs> <laughs>